Hello and welcome to Pearson and BBC Studio Speak Up for Sustainability. First ever live lesson. Today's lesson is all about our carbon footprint. I'll be keeping in touch with you in the chat in the chat box, which is that side, obviously. Um, so you keep on in there, throw out your ideas, have a chat. We'll also be connecting through other mediums as well. And I'll make sure that you've got all of the information for those as we go along. Before we start, I am going to give you the link to the worksheet for today. It's an online flipping book, so check that out. And one other thing, I just want to make sure we all know, so everyone can see everyone and everyone can talk to everybody and everyone can hear everybody. If we look over here in the chat box, make sure it's not just panelists, but it's all panelists and attendees, okay? Panelists and attendees, just to make sure everyone can see what you're saying. Oh, well, that's a bit close, isn't it? You can even see the white hairs in my beard. I guess that's a sign of wisdom. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to share my screen um, and we can begin. Your students from India are finding it hard to join. Yeah, it was too close, wasn't it? I'll take the introduction slowly. So hopefully they'll have time to, to get on board as I'm introducing things. Um, so here we go. Oh, everyone can see all my links there. Oh, I've covered all my links. So as I said, this is Speak Up for Sustainability. This is our carbon footprint lesson because we're coming to the end of our carbon footprint theme. You can see there our Instagram tag. Please do check it out, give us a follow because on there we've got a whole host of materials. We've got top tips, we've got videos, we've got interviews. We've even got me being silly in all sorts of places which is always fun, isn't it? Um, so please do log on, give us a follow and check it out. So let's get down to business. Um, oh, I put the wrong thing in there. I put the live classes worksheet when I meant to put the worksheet from today's class. Um, we will be using worksheet activities. We'll be using the chat box and we will of course be using the Padlet and the Menti. May I please repeat? all panelists and attendees in the chat box. And please keep it in English as much as possible. Hello, India. Hello, Poland. Jen, Jen Dobri. Um, hello, Gabrielle from Argentina. Hello from Barcelona. Nice to see you, Mr. Shepherd. I hope we're all well. So let's learn something about me while you guys are introducing yourself. Lebanon, hi there. This is my hometown. Wow, Harry, that looks like an interesting, fun place to live. <clears throat> uh, hello, Sri Lanka. Um, this is not a fun and interesting place to live. This is Northampton. Northampton, Middle England, uh, made famous by a song that said we could get to London in 60 miles by road or rail. If you've been to England, if anyone in here has been to England, can you please say banana? Can you please say banana if you've been to England? Carolina's been to England. Remember, all panelists and attendees. Vanessa's been to England. Uh, lo whoa, lots of people have been to England. Great. If you haven't been to England, now don't worry. Can you say <sighs> rocket? <sighs> upcycled rocket we'll be learning more about that in plastics and litter our next theme okay so if and when you do go to england there are loads of beautiful places to visit you can go to london you can go to bristol you can go to brighton you can go to durham you can even go to the wonderful essex where there are lots of fantastic places to visit don't go to Northampton. Whatever you do, do not go to Northampton. It is awful. You can see there the picture on the right. That is the, the, the icon of Northampton. They call it the lighthouse of Northampton. It is, in fact, a lift testing tower. Yes, you heard me right. An elevator testing tower. That is where, wait for it, they used to test lifts. 
they used to. They don't even test lifts in it anymore. It's just a building that's really high for no reason. Uh, so Northampton, not great. I wouldn't put it on my list of places to visit. Um, and there's a picture of me the last time I was in England. You can see something very special about that picture. I had quite a lot of hair. Um, and my daughter was also an awful lot younger. My wife, however, is equally as beautiful to this day. However, I now live in the wonderful, the delightful and the amazing Valencina de la Concepcion, which is here in Spain. Um, it's a very small village just outside Seville. You may have heard of Seville. They basically own the Europa League. Uh, they won it three times in a row not long back, and they won it a while ago. Um, exactly, and it is special, as, uh, as Zainab has just said. It is special because of my family. Um, home is where the heart is, as they say. And since I was 12, my heart has not been in Northampton, I have to admit. So... I like flags. Um, fun with flags, everybody says that. I liked flags before Sheldon Cooper likes flags. That's my favourite flag. If anyone can guess what it is, you get five points. I don't know what the points are for, but you get them anyway. Um, there you go, the Pumas, the rugby team from Argentina. There you go. I do like flags. I'm a big fan. I've got a few flag books there in my bookshelf behind me. I'm a big fan of funky shirts. One of my favorite secondhand buys here. Um, yeah, you might not be able to smell me right now, but this one's definitely going in the wash straight after this lesson. And I created Renewable English, which is a climate change awareness course. It's a completely free climate change awareness course, which you can see every Thursday at five o'clock on YouTube. So feel free to come on down. Thank you very much, Alejandro. I appreciate it. I'm glad you like the show. So chuck in the chat box. What's your name? Where are you from? What's your school called? Like for example, brrr, hello, my name is Harry from Northampton, England. I go to Renewable English School. So in the chat box, say about where you're from and what school you go to maybe. There we go, we've got Montolina from Mexico City. Hands up if you're from Montolina. From Roklov in Poland. Poland, wonderful country, love it. The Gazprom School, ah. I've been to Łódź and I've been to Krakow, but I've not been anywhere else. Hello from Cruz Azul. We've got someone in Florentia. Wow, they're coming through now. Antonio from Mexico. We've got Sofia from Mexico as well. We've got some people from Buenos Aires. I would love to come to Rocklock. Next on my list, I'm desperate to go to Mexico. I'm desperate to go to Croatia and I'm desperate to go to Rome because I've got an excellent friend in Rome. So I'm going there next summer for sure. Um, but yeah. Poland is definitely on the list again. We've got Colombo in Sri, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka? Why am I saying it like I'm Spanish? In Sri Lanka. Um, an elementary school. Hello, Deepak. From India. Whereabouts in India are you from? Um, excellent. Angel as well from Mexico. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. We've got about 105 people in the room now, which is always nice. Hello, Donovan from Mexico City. Now, you're gonna need your chat box and your worksheet. I got it right there, <laughs> so don't you worry. I'm gonna put it back in here again. If you need the worksheet, it's there for anybody who, who would so desire. And then of course your chat box. Hello, Indonesia. Lovely of you to join us. And remember, only English in the chat. Bugs. What are our objectives today? What do we want to learn? I don't know. Well, I do actually. So here we go. We want to learn five words about our carbon footprint. We want to get some ideas on how to reduce our carbon footprint. And we want to be more confident to speak out for sustainability. Speak out for sustainability. That is the aim of this Pearson and BBC Studio project 
It's over five months. There are five different themes. And we want to help you get your voice in English so you can be vocal and active, become an activist and speak out for sustainability. Remember, please do check out the Instagram page. I'm going to post it again now because there's all sorts of materials in there where you can help improve your voice and we can all speak out for sustainability. Oh, I've given you the wrong post there. Let me just double give, there's the flipping book one more time because I forgot to cut, press copy. And there is our Instagram page. Jump on, give us a follow. Um, and there you can find all of the materials and information you could so desire to help improve your voice to speak out for sustainability. Um, so here we go. Let's get back to this. And as they would say, let's get down, let's get down to business. This is the quote of the theme. I've learned you are never too small to make a difference. I love the song by Rachel Platten called Fight Song, in which she says, I may only have one match, but I can make an explosion. Now, this young lady who said this certainly has made an explosion, a good explosion, a green explosion. Can anybody guess who said this? There you go. It was Greta. We don't even need to say her surname anymore, do we? We just know. Everybody knows Greta is Greta. I absolutely love Greta. Please feel free to jump on board with my Twitter campaign. I'm trying to get Greta on as a guest. She is one of my all-time heroes. Um, everyone can make a difference. You can make a difference. You can make a small difference. You can make a big difference. You can make a good difference. You can make a bad difference. But what we want to do is make a difference. There you go. One action, even if it's a small one, can make a big difference. You may only have one match, but you can make an explosion. What is that? What is that? What can you see? It's a footprint. What kind of footprint do you think it is? It's a footprint, that's for sure. It's a human footprint. It is my footprint as well. Now, something here for all the Spanish speakers. Um, I made this footprint with my barbecue. So I put my foot in the barbecue and I got my foot covered in charcoal. Now in Spanish, charcoal is called carbon. Tanya's got there. It's a carbon footprint. It is a carbon footprint because I did it using coal. It's a carbon footprint. It's me trying to be hilarious. That's a wonderful picture from Hema Galan Photography. She's taken it for me there um, of my foot after. It's actually on the wall as well. Dainty, they're enormous. They're not really, they're only a 45. So what I want you to do is in the Menti, you can use the QR code there, or you can also use this that I'm about to give you. I don't know why it's not coming up on my screen. Hello. Um, jump in the Menti. And I want you to say, what words spring to mind when you hear carbon footprint? What do you think when you hear carbon footprint? What's the first thing that comes to your head? And in just a moment, I will open the menti for everyone to see and we'll all be like, wow, amazing. Excellent, if you've got your ideas, please feel free, throw them into the Throw them into the, the Menti there, or put it in. You can click on the link, jump in the Menti and chuck in your ideas. Oof, I tell you what, it's getting warm in here. I need a summer hat. Feel free to go to the Menti meter. I don't see anyone posting anything in there just yet. I can see all of them in the chat box, but the Menti is as yet untouched. What do we think a carbon footprint? You think the crudes? Some people have said air pollution, greenhouse, climate change, fossil fuels, the environment. Mapping carbon, carbon emissions of any organization. Great, overpopulation. Oh, here we go. We've got a few things pop. There we go, it's popping in now. Oh, I'm telling you what, this is looking like a beautiful mentee. I am gonna have to get a picture of this one. Oh my God, it's getting bigger and bigger. 
I haven't shared it with you yet, but I'm getting really excited by this menti. This is one of my favorite mentis I think I've ever seen. So far 20 in the menti. Um, let's see if anyone else can jump in there. No planet B, somebody has said. Love it. I absolutely love that phrase um, because it's just so true. Consumerism. Wow. You guys know an awful lot. I did a lesson, uh, Renewable English on the Road recently where I went into a school. We came up with about five different words for this. So I am gonna reshare now so everyone can see it. And I'm also gonna get a screenshot of me looking amazed at these, these incredible words. Um, here we go, let's get a screenshot here. <clears throat> Fantastic. There's our screenshot, everybody, with their wonderful words in there. So do you agree with these words? What do you think? What do you think about these words? So we've got environment, pollution, human, charcoal, prehistory, where there, when there was no, when there was no carbon footprint or at least very little. Um, fantastic work. Lovely job. Environment is the biggest one on there, of course. So this is what we're going to be looking at today. It's like a shadow of life. Oh, I like that. Who said that? Who said it's a shadow of life? That is beautiful. Lovely. Um, air pollution, nomads, environment, good. I tell you what, environment is probably my most incorrectly spelled word that I ever have in, in, in my life. I always miss the N the first, at the start, always. For environment, every time. I don't know why. I write it about 20 times a day. But you know what? We all make mistakes. Okay. So shall we get back to this? Let's get back to the class. Let me just big this up again. And we can resume. Um, some wonderful words in there. So we are going to look at our carbon footprint. Um, and... Something that I found in doing all my research and uh, my carbon footprint is bigger than I would like it to be. There are lots of places you can go. You can simply type in carbon footprint calculator and you can find out just how much of a footprint you have personally. Um, and I think it is everybody's responsibility to do what we can to reduce our carbon footprint as much as possible, in my opinion. But it's also our position, it's also up to us when we've got our voices to speak out for sustainability, to encourage others to reduce their carbon footprint. And like the landmark case in, uh, in the Netherlands, the day before yesterday, I believe, um, big companies and especially oil companies need to commit to reducing their carbon footprint. I'll tell you one thing that really annoys me, and that's when I'm walking down the high street at night and all the shops are closed, but they've all got their lights on still. This is something that we can do. We can make a difference with things like that. We can campaign with those shops and say, guys, just turn your lights off. Because electricity consumption is a huge factor in our carbon footprint. But there are also other factors. Now you'll see on your worksheet, um, there are four main factors, four hotspots that I like to think of when we're talking about our carbon footprint. Oh, I'm going to move my face out the way there. What we buy, what we eat, energy production and consumption, travel and transport. Now, I've put the first two at the top because I think the first two are the things that we can make the biggest difference in. We can make the biggest difference with these top two because we decide this. We don't decide how energy is produced unless you're lucky enough to have solar panels on your roof where you can provide your own electricity, which is my dream, by the way. Um, I do have some to heat my water, but not to create electricity. It is the dream to do that. So what we buy and what we eat are the two I'm gonna focus on now. Um, how does what we buy affect the planet? How does what we buy affect the planet? 
Hmm. Great question, Harry. How does it affect the planet? You're the teacher. Why don't you tell us? Ha, because I'm asking you first. Everything we do affects the planet. Everything we do has a, often has a negative effect on the planet, but not always. There are lots of things we can do to have a positive effect on the planet. But of course, everything we buy has to be made, has to be created, has to be transported. Things like clothes, for example. First, you've got to pick the cotton, which you need tractors, which use diesel. Then you have to transport it. There you go. There's also yeah, plastics, pesticides, non-biodegradable items, fruit, especially if you're buying it from abroad. I know that there's a big obsession with people who, you know, they want to have strawberries all year round. Well, strawberries don't grow all year round, guys. Um, fashion, yes, fashion makes a lot of pollution. We can buy less products, we can use them and make them last longer. In theme three, we do have a, a, a wonderful guest, uh, Ursula de Castro, and she's going to talk to us all about reducing, reusing and recycling clothes. So do tune in for that one. Um, we buy plastic, which is very bad for the environment. People think about the plastic as well, the end product of it being in the ocean. We forget that it has to be created using oil as well. So all of this has an effect on the planet. So my, my thing that I say to all of my students, all of my teacher training sessions, I always say, do I need it? Do I need it or do I want it? Am I being selfish in buying this? Am I being selfish when I'm buying this thing? Do I really need it or am I, do I need three pairs of jeans? Do I need 15 different shirts? Probably not. So I think rather than buying firsthand, I always try and buy secondhand. If you look around this room, everything in here except that globe back there is secondhand. It's either been given to me as a gift or it's been upcycled, or it's been bought from, uh, thank you very much uh, there, Tony. It has been bought from a secondhand shop. My computer is secondhand. Um, I've got this beautiful picture here that my wife made me for Father's Day, which has got wild flowers, which is in a secondhand frame. Um, everything is secondhand. So every time you buy something, just think, do I need it? particularly when it comes to clothes and electronic items also have a big imprint on the planet. The next one is what we eat. Now, I'm not going to come in here and say to everybody, you should all be vegan because plant-based diets are the best for the planet. They are, um, but perhaps maybe you don't want to go vegan. Great, but certainly reduce your consumption of animal products, reduce your consumption of of milk maybe, because these are things that have a huge effect on the planet. Um, most of our fast food is very unhealthy. You're right there, uh, Zainab. So all of these things aren't great for the planet. My first step to, towards going vegan, almond milk is wonderful. I'm a big fan of oat milk, uh, Vanessa, a huge fan. The first thing I did was, was cut out milk. That was the first step for me. Um, I know it's very expensive to buy the more sustainable milks um, because governments fund um, governments fund the agricultural industry. So cow milk is in fact cheaper than water quite often, despite the fact one liter of cow milk uses about a thousand liters of water. Um, but that was my first step. My next step was to cut out beef because beef has a huge carbon footprint. And then after that, I've slowly reduced, but what I can't give up are fried egg sandwiches. And that's another key point about this. If you don't go full vegan, don't worry, don't beat yourself up about it. I describe myself as an imperfect environmentalist. You know, I do use the air conditioning from time to time. Um, I do eat eggs. Um, I have been known to buy something in single use plastic before. I try my hardest not to. And if I do, I upcycle. Energy production and consumption. 
we can reduce our energy consumption dramatically just thinking about turning off lights unplugging things um axel has said i think this is caused by capitalism i'm not going to start on that because we've only got about 35 minutes left and i don't want to jump on my high horse about that one just yet um so energy production and consumption these are things that we can think about now there is a top tips video that I'm going to show you at the end because there's a quick video project that I'd love to see you guys do. And there are some tips that, that I've done around the house with how we can kind of reduce our carbon footprint and we can think about that. Travel and transport, very simple. On your bike, son. I love riding my bike. Uh, so I try and ride my bike wherever I can. I try and avoid getting in the car when possible, but at the moment, I'm afraid I can't afford to buy an electric car. So Elon Musk, if you're listening and you want to send me a free car to help the planet, feel free. I'm right here. Um, bikes and public transport, very good. Lots of different things that, that we can do there. Oh, I've gone backwards. I meant to go forwards. So what do you do? What do you do? I think not consuming industrial and necessary products is more important than even meat consumption. Not yet. Yeah, Overconsumption is ridiculous. It's absolutely true. And, and I think one of the key things with, with meat consumption, especially is just try not to eat it every day. Like our bodies don't really need it every day. My, my dad, he's 65. 65 he's 65 in august actually um vanessa has a hybrid car good job um my dad's 65 in august and he had really high blood pressure he had glaucoma um and was have and he had to go in for an operation uh, and he's gone almost totally plant-based and that has has improved his uh, cholesterol has improved his energy levels now <laughs> he only the only meat that he eats are the rabbits that he finds on my sister's farm. He, he hunts rabbits to, to try and avoid them undermining the trees that he's buried. Bike is a good option, ah, but in underdeveloped countries, it doesn't work. Ah, perhaps the roads aren't good enough. I agree, we should analyze before eating and buying. Great, Axel. I think the, the first, the, the biggest thing for me was when somebody said, do we need it? That was one of the things that really, it kind of, it flicked a switch in my head. Good, you make compost out of organic rubbish. People walk. I love walking. It gives me time to clear my mind. Um, I'd love to say I love walking my dog, but she can be a bit annoying sometimes. She's very big and very powerful. So uh, I love walking my dog when she's well behaved. Um, but my, one of my favorite things is my morning walk to school in the morning with my daughter. Uh, if you've seen on Instagram, I, I imagine some of you have, we pick litter up every day on our way to school. So for me, that's, it's one of those visible things that you can see are making a difference to the planet. So I absolutely love walking to school every day. It's fun. It's time for us to connect. Um, and it's fun to pick up plastic. Cecilia is a vegetarian. Good job. Get clothes from second hand. Yes. There are loads of apps as well. And the best thing about uh, pre-loved food, uh, pre-loved food, no, pre-loved clothes, is, you know, there's such a wide selection of them. You don't have to rely on the fast fashion industry to tell you what you have to wear. You can look at all these different options. Eat your fill. Good. Don't waste food. That is the easiest way to avoid climate change is to not waste food. Oh, the packaging on bananas. Plastic packaging on banana drives me crazy. Parents are a mirror of their children. Oh, I like that. It is cheaper secondhand. Very good. So we are going to watch the first part of a video all about a sustainable city. I'm only showing you the first part as a teaser because the second part is coming out very, very soon on the... Uh, on the Instagram page. So you're gonna to have to go there to learn more about this sustainable city. So, before we watch, complete task A, answer the question. 
if your birthday is from January to April. If your birthday is from January to April, type it in the chat box now. March 24th, bam. When's your birthday? If it's March to April, March the 2nd, excellent. Excellent month there, Vanessa. Another March one. Well, lots of March people come through here. We've got the 26th of February, we've got the 10th of February, we've got the 14th of January, we've got the 12th of February, we've got the 10th of March, we've got the 18th of February. You guys are all on number one. We've got the 22nd of April as well. We've got another night of February, we've got the 31st of May. Oh, happy birthday, because that's in just a few days, isn't it? Happy birthday in a few days. Um, we've got a few people that have just gone. Um, you guys who are in May, um, you are doing Mind the Gap. Mind the Gap. That's a fill the gap activity. Now, be careful because the final gap fill has moved on to the next page and it's just above the little box there. So it's actually on two pages. I don't know who made the worksheet, but I oh, should probably sack that guy. Definitely wasn't me. Yeah, so the formatting is a bit strange on that one. Oh, we've got two people on October the 11th. Oh no, it's Regina, it's both of yours. And the last one, I want you to keep your ear out for words about sustainability and the climate. So here are your questions for the first one. By which year will energy demands double? What percentage of electricity does Dubai use on air conditioning? What is the fifth fuel? And what type of city is Mazda described as? Oh, Paula in Mexico, you share a birthday with my wife. Next one here, you have to fill in the gaps. So globally, <clears throat> for electricity has doubled. Ooh. Excellent. And the last one is listen out for words related to the theme, carbon footprint. So we're going to watch this video now. So I'm going to stop sharing here. I'm going to get our Insta page up because all of the videos are available on our Instagram page. Here we go. You can see them all here. Beautifully laid out on our Instagram page. And here is the video. Globally, demand for electricity has doubled since 1980, and it's expected to double again by 2035. And Dubai is no exception. In less than a century, a sleepy fishing port has been transformed into one of the commercial capitals in the Gulf. That change has gone hand in hand with an insatiable demand for electricity. During peak times in Dubai, 60% of all electricity is used for air conditioning. And after just a few minutes in the heat, you can understand why. Uh, you don't know how good this feels. It's so much better. I mean, basically everywhere inside around here is air conditioned down about 20 degrees. That's only possible because vast amounts of oil and gas mean abundant cheap energy. So this is the last place in the world that you expect to learn lessons about what's called the fifth fuel, energy efficiency. Despite sitting on some of the biggest oil reserves in the world, the United Arab Emirates is looking at new ways to use less energy. At first glance, the parched desert landscape just outside Abu Dhabi it's like the craziest place to build any city, let alone a sustainable one. But the vision here at Mazdar City is to pioneer a new approach in the way cities are designed and use energy. So, we, I forgot to turn myself back on. That was silly of me. Um, so there we go. Let me just press stop on the video there because it's playing again. Um, so if you do want to see the follow-up video, it will be available very soon uh, on, on the Instagram page, as I've mentioned a number of times. I'm just gonna 
So we're going to go through the answers in just a moment there. So feel free. Ooh. Okay, so my, my screen was just telling me that I couldn't do things. And I thought, do you know what? Zoom, don't tell me what I can do and what I can't do. I'll do what I want. So have you got your answers ready? Did you notice anything different about this? Let me know. Is there anything strange that's going on here? Hmm. We've got three new messages here. So we got, there we go, Danica, very good. My shirt has changed, which is why my face has definitely got redder because I had to do it very quickly. Um, let's get back to sharing our, our screen so we can go through the answers. Oh, ah. there we go. Do, 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 do. It, my face is definitely redder, isn't it? Yeah, I jumped up and I changed super fast. So, so by which year would uh, by which year our energy demand is going to double? I need to get my chat box open. Is it twenty thirty five, or is it twenty thirty? I'm going to have to go back and double check that because I might have written the wrong answer in there. That'd be embarrassing, wouldn't it? I think you're right. It is 2035. I don't know why I did that. I've got the answers right on the worksheet, but I put it wrong on the PowerPoint. Um, so what percentage of electricity does Dubai use on air conditioning? Exactly. Wow, look at that. 60%. 60%. And what is the fifth fuel? The fifth fuel is... The room goes quiet as everybody's thinking. Hmm. Energy efficiency in there like lightning. Well done. With my fancy writing there. And what type of city is Mazda described as? A sustainable city, very good. Now, if you want to learn more about Mazda City, the video will be out very soon after this class, so you'll be able to click and find out what goes on there. So globally, mm, for electricity has doubled since 1980. Globally, uh, for Bam, Camilla, you're the winner. Straight in there with demand for. And you can see there, demand for. You can see it's a dependent preposition. In less than a, hmm, this sleepy fishing port has been transformed. Camilla, you've got like lightning fingers or something. You're just straight in there, straight away. Great job, everybody who's answered that one. Less than a century with a spelling mistake. There we go, good. With a, in a blink of an eye, exactly. During hmm times in Dubai. Oh, this time Camilla was beaten to the punch, I'm afraid, but it is peak, very good. During peak times, peak like on a mountain is at the top. So they like when you look at a graph, peak time is when they're using a lot of electricity. And I've given you the answer to the last one. I don't know why, but it's cra the craziest place to build any city, let alone a sustainable city. Um, very good. Now, what about your, the words to do with carbon footprint? Now, this was a bit of a cheeky one by me because a lot of the words could be to do with carbon footprint, but chuck it in the chat box, which words you think are the carbon footprint. Let's see if you agreed with your bearded teacher. These are the ones I chose, but obviously, Everybody makes mistakes and not even teachers know everything. Um, so these were the words that I heard in the video that I thought related to carbon footprint. So use less energy, sustainable oil, gas, cheap energy. Cheap energy because I'm not sure cheap energy is the answer. I would like affordable energy though. Um, and yeah, please do watch the follow up video because that place looks incredible. Absolutely incredible. I'd love for my house to be a bit like Mazda City. 
I'd need to redesign it a little bit. It's about 35 years old and it's not great for insulation, that's for sure. Now, we've got another video for you. You can see that strange man in the street with his microphone out interviewing people. This is all about top tips. Here are some top tips all about reducing our carbon footprint. Um, you can see this post is also on the wonderful Instagram page. So it is me. Look at that. Look at that wonderful shirt he's wearing. One thing though, my beard was a bit out of hand at that point. Um, and I got the go ahead and I had to give it a little bit of a trim. Uh, but it is, of course, a different shirt. And the hat. Well, this hat's going to be on my head until the 24th of June, at which point it's coming off and I'm going to shave my head. It's time for me to go full Bruce Willis um, and maybe raise some money for charity. So let's have a look at these top tips. And while you're watching, I want you to think of your own so we can put them on the Padlet in just a moment. So let's jump across to the incredible and amazing page here of Renewable English, Renewable English No, Pearson English Learning, sorry, force of habit there guys. So here we go. Are you ready for some top tips? Hi, it's Harry here and I've taken to the streets of Valencina to ask some people for their top tips in reducing their carbon footprint. Hi, my name's Hema and I'm from Spain and Australia. And one thing that you can do is buy second hand. You can still be fashionable and it helps the planet. Hello, my name is Laura. I'm from Seville. And one thing I do is before I go to sleep, I unplug all my electronics. Hi, my name is Javi. I'm from a little town in Seville, uh, Valencia, and my top tip is to eat less meat. Hello, my name is Manuela, and I live in Valencia. Uh, my top tip is that on, when I go to school, I never use a bottle of plastic. Hi, I'm Ali. I'm from Seville, and my top tip is to ride your bike. Don't go, don't go by car. My name is Carmen, I'm from Seville, and I always remind my students to switch off the lights, reduce uh, the, their use of paper, and always unplug the electronics. My name is Mila. I live in Spain, and my top tip is is share my clothes with my friends. My name is Sarah Gemba. I live here in the village in Valencina, but I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts. And my top tip for reducing our carbon footprint would be that, well, I have three children, and instead of buying books online or at stores, we always use the local library. I like to do my own presents. So what are your top tips? Share them with us using the hashtag below, speak out for sustainability. There we go. So please do share them with us uh, using the hashtag below, speak out for sustainability. Um, and I'm going to give you the link for the Padlet because we, do we have time? Yes, we've got time. Woohoo! I was worried we weren't going to have enough time to get all of your top tips. So I'm going to put the link for the Padlet up now. Just give me a moment. I'm going to stop sharing for a, a second so you can all have full appreciation of what just happened before your eyes. Yeah. Some things have changed around here, guys. <laughs> There's a new sheriff in town, um, except I'm not a sheriff. I look more like a farmer. Um, there is a new farmer in town. So here is a link to the Padlet. I'm going to open it now so we can all have a, a quick look there. A quick, a wee look-see at the Padlet. Do -do -do -do. Not Panic at the Disco, which was going to be our next song. Um, there we go. Somebody's already started writing in there, which is brilliant. Everyone jump on over. We can have a look at the, see what we're doing. You can see mine is Harry from Spain. Buy your clothes from a secondhand shop or app. What have you guys got in store? Now, if you want, you can tell me to be quiet, 
and you can jump on in there and you can leave a voice message as well. So I'll show you how. Where have I gone here? So I'll put Harry. I'm going to do it in a different voice. Hello, my top tip to reduce your carbon footprint is to walk and don't take the car because that's pollution in, in itself. What am I talking about? I suddenly turned Scottish and forgot what I was going to say. But anyway, that's how we can record. So please feel free. I'm going to be quiet for two minutes. Okay, I'm going to be quiet for two minutes in case anybody wants to record. Now, for those of you that know me, being quiet for two minutes is not very easy. So you're going to see me sitting here just struggling not to, not to speak. Everyone's a bit shy. No one wants to record a voice message. Come on, you can do it. I'll give you 30 seconds longer. Okay, so nobody seems to be doing any voice recording, so I can speak again, which is nice. Right, so let's go through some of these answers. You should ride a bike instead of cars, but if you can't do that, then you should use public transportation. Excellent, really good. Um, where's another one that I saw? Stop buying products that come in plastic containers and instead buy products at a local shop where you can bring your own reusable containers. Great advice there, Regina. Great advice. Um, turn off your data when charging your cell phone. Uh, very good. Um, use less plastic and unplug electronics during the night. Excellent. Very good. My top tip is don't use plastic bottles and try not to use a lot of energy. Very good. Don't use pencils, somebody said. I'm not sure why pencils are bad. Uh, we checked from Poland. It said eat less meat. Very good. Um, buy things secondhand and plug electronic devices. Don't use plastic bags and bottles. Use a bike. Do not waste a lot of water. Sophia from Mexico has got loads of ideas there. Susie said eat less meat. My top tip is to eat less meat. Avoid it and recycle. Not avoid the meat, obvious. Not recycle the meat, obviously. Carry your own bags. Buy in bulk. I always carry my own bags. I almost lost it the other day when I was in the supermarket and there was a guy in there who bought six plastic bottles of water and then the lady said, do you want a bag? And do you know what he said? He said, yes. And I was just like, oh, this isn't okay. In fact, I left, I took a photo of myself and I sent it to, to I put it on Instagram to, to share my anger. MG from Italy, good one. Switch up your PC at night. Our pencils are made of wood. Indeed, they are. Um, recycle the things you buy. Use cloth bags to do grocery shopping. I'm like that weird guy who I don't think is actually weird, but they seem a bit weird. I go out, I always have my rucksack with me. Everywhere I go, I take my rucksack and in it, 
I've got my reusable bottle. I've got a container for food. I've got loads and loads and loads and loads of bags in there. Um, I've got my litter picking gloves. I've got my litter bags as well. So you, if you ever see me in the streets, if you ever hear in Valencina, um, then you'll see me walking around with my bag full of tricks. Uh, using an iron straw, good. That reduces the amount of plastic, uh, good. People have said a lot about eating less meat, but of course, eating less fish as well. I went to a, a beach on Tuesday, a deserted beach where there was, there was almost nobody. You had to get a boat to go to the beach. I went there for my seventh wedding anniversary. Thank you very much. Yes, I found somebody to marry me and put up with me for this long. Um, big congratulations to me, I think. I'm not sure many people could. But anyway, we went to the beach. And we were sitting there, it was very romantic. Um, and I looked across and I saw some nets. Um, and I sat there impatiently trying to continue to be nice and romantic and, and not destroy the mood. But my wife just said, go on, off you go. Um, and at that point I went off and I picked up the plastic nets. Uh, there wasn't a lot of like tourist rubbish. There weren't many bottles and cans or things like that, but there were, there was loads of stuff that had come from fishing boats. So there's an awful lot of trash uh, in the ocean about that. There's somebody, have you posted a video there? I don't know, if, can I watch that? Or is this somebody saying something about? Or is this somebody just dropping in there to? Ah, I didn't get Rick rolled. I thought I was going to get Rick rolled then. I had a sudden fear of Rick Astley popping up. And I thought, no, not now, not today. I've been rickrolled a few times and I've tried to get ahead of the game uh, otherwise. And I, I normally jump ahead. Some brilliant ideas in here. Now, as we only have a few minutes left, I am going to click across back to the PowerPoint because I would like... Uh, I, I was listening to Panic at the Disco, you can see there. Um, I would like to introduce the video challenge. Everybody, we have got a video project, a video challenge. I want you to show us how you reduce your carbon footprint and share it using the hashtag speak out for sustainability. But Harry, what are we supposed to do for this video challenge? What are you talking about, you crazy man? I'll tell you what you're supposed to do, guys. Watch this video and find out. He says, as soon as his mouse stops working and he can't seem to find it, and he's just trying desperately to get to the top of the screen. Wake up, mouse. Uh, Acosta de Oz, feel free. You're more than welcome to follow um, with Pearson uh, at Learning English, English Learning, sorry but also you can check out Renewable English, of course. Harry Aguas Locas, I like that. Okay, so here we go. You can share the video on Instagram. Oh, I can't pause it. You can share the video on Instagram using the hashtag uh, and tagging Pearson English Learning. You can also share it on Facebook with us as well. I'm gonna show you now my video. I'm not gonna say it's great, but you know what? It's not terrible, that's for sure. So this is what I did. I want to see what you've got for your tips and your ideas to reduce your carbon footprint at home. So here we go. There we go. Um, I couldn't help but dance. Really sorry about that. If you need to watch it again, just jump onto Insta, have a look, and you can follow through there. Um, I would love, I would love to see your videos. Please do send in your videos. Uh, please do tag uh, Speak Out for Sustainability because I want to see your videos. I absolutely love it. Vanessa said a nice clean kitchen there. My house is remarkably clean. Um, one of the things I'm trying to get into at the moment are homemade cleaning products. 
Um, so far, I've not found the perfect one. If anybody would like to send me some good recipes for them, that would be amazing. Um, so on Instagram, you can find that on at Pearson English Learning. You can find it there. Bicarbonate of soda. I've used lemons a lot as well. I do always refill my bottles, but um, I don't know if it's something from my youth or something the smell of a cleaning products I really you know you know the house is clean from there so um please do send me some peruvian recipes uh, i would be delighted um you can of course connect on instagram or facebook if you want to send them across i am going to jump over here now i want to see if maybe you guys if we've achieved our aims if we've achieved our objectives so did we learn five new words to uh, about our carbon footprint if you did how's about you say um beard if you learn five new words just chuck in the chat box beard excellent if you didn't learn five new words you could write hat maybe because they are the two things that really define the teacher his beard and his hat excellent good did now i think even more importantly did you get some ideas on how to reduce your carbon footprint i know i got some ideas from the padlet and i'll be going back there to learn some more did you get some ideas for carbon footprint if you did Get ideas for carbon foot your, to reduce your carbon footprint. Say reduce. Thank you, Vanessa. You're an absolute hero there. Good. The thing I love about sharing ideas about reducing our carbon footprint is you always learn something new from somebody. Um, I learned things from uh, from all sorts of children that I was teaching the other day. I've got some uh, a class of seven year olds and. And they come in, they all had their own ideas and they all think of what they can do to reduce the carbon footprint. And finally, ah, oh, thank you, uh, Tony in Mexico. Somebody, did, when I had more hair, I looked a bit more like uh, Ewan McGregor and Obi-Wan, maybe not so much anymore. So I think most importantly of all, are you more confident to speak out for sustainability? You know, are you more confident because we know that English is the language of protest, English is the language of the world. So now you can communicate your ideas with friends across the globe on helping reduce their carbon footprint as well. And indeed, may the force be with all of you. This is great news. Um, I'm so glad that you guys have uh, heard some more things and really do get involved because it seems like everything's here in this one lesson, but. This one lesson is a culmination of a whole month's work from a whole team of incredible people. Um, the team behind Speak Up for Sustainability are absolutely amazing. Um, I would be nothing without those guys. They, they have done so much work. So thank you so much to all of those people. Um, I'm not gonna embarrass you guys by naming names. You know who you are and you guys have been amazing. I will send the Instagram details again now. So a big thank you to everybody who's helped produce uh, Speak Up for Sustainability. Most importantly, a big thanks to all of you for coming along today and being part of Speak Up for Sustainability. Remember, follow along on Instagram and Facebook to see all of the different things we've got coming out. But also remember next month, we've got another uh, theme which starts next week, which is all about plastic and litter. In the next theme, we have got some amazing guests. Uh, we've got Crystal Ambrose from the, um, the Bahamas Plastic Movement. And we've also got my favorite charity of all time, Kids Against Plastic. In fact, they're the guys I'm going to be shaving my head for on the 24th of June. But on the 16th, we've got a live Instagram chat with Amy Meek, one of my absolute heroes. So please do come along for that. And... No, Vanessa, don't worry. The beard will not be going anywhere. The beard will not be going anywhere. I can't lose it all at the same time. I've had an absolute ball with you guys. 
if you have enjoyed this, do come along next month. It's, I can't remember the date. I think it's the 25th. It's the, the I'm going to look on my calendar. I've got it written down somewhere. It is the 25th. Um, and if you like, every Thursday at five o'clock Central European time, you can also come along and watch the live Renewable English sessions on YouTube. Do check it out. You guys have been wonderful. I'm going to press stop on the record. So I'm going to say goodbye, but I'm going to give a few more moments to say goodbye over there. Uh, so thanks for coming, everybody. You've been amazing. And I'll see you all over the internet speaking out for sustainability.